So this is the uh, Security University's Information System Security Engineering Professional course. Let me give you a couple of uh, uh, points about how you can be more successful on the exam. First of all, don't rely on a rote memorization of details. If there's too much information, chances are you'll never be able to do it. But if you learn the fundamental concepts behind the engineering, right, behind the, the, the processes, you know, what, what constitutes risk management, why you would do certification accreditation, you know, why we would have various steps within the risk management framework, or why we would have various steps within the security engineering process, then you'll be able to reason your way through uh, a lot of the, the answers on the, on the exam. Follow the ISAP Bolton domains religiously, the outline religiously. This, uh, I, I don't know how to stress this more uh, because bottom line is they do it, you should do the same. And we're actually going to do it as well, but uh, there are going to be a few exceptions. For example, we're going to present uh, domain four before the rest of the domains, and I'll explain why in just a minute. First, then I want you to read all the documents on the ISAP bulletin's reading list. Uh, yes, uh, as crazy as it sounds, uh, you really need to. Uh, first of all, obviously it'll help improve your, your chances of success, but uh, the real reason is, is the exam is very detailed. Uh, it, it, it is probably the, the, the most difficult of the, of the special exams that ISC Squared offers. It definitely has the lowest pass rate, so that would tell you something. So the more you read, the better you are, the better off you are. However, there are some documents that are more important than others, and you'll see that as we go through the, uh, the, the course material. So read as much as you can. Start with the ones that, uh, that uh, are arguably the most important, but if you can read them all, uh, you're, you're better off. And then, of course, follow standard test-taking pra best practices, get some sleep, you know, uh, be uh, uh, well-rested before the exam, uh, you know, have something to eat, uh, study over a long period of time. Don't don't just cram at the end. I know a lot of us have done that from college, but uh, but uh, doesn't work that well, especially on this exam. So this is the course outline. First, I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, of an introduction about the risk concepts. You know about what governance really means. Then we're going to go start going through the, the uh, domains. We're going to start with domain four because this is really the one that that uh, besides being the most tedious, uh, will at least set, uh, help set the framework or the uh, uh, the tone for the course uh, uh, and for the exam because it discusses all the relevant regulations uh, and policies and laws uh, around information system security engineering. Then we'll go into the system security engineering uh, directly, uh, talk about certification accreditation and risk management framework that it supports. Then we'll talk about technical management, which is really the uh, project management processes that uh, the ISSC will support. So. Uh, how do we come up with these domains uh, for information system security engineering? Well, you have to think about what systems engineering does as part of the acquisition process. So you have systems engineering and you have program management, and then the intersection of those two forms technical management, which is also known as engineering management or systems engineering management. Then if you look at information assurance and ITIS compliance, because a lot of our requirements are driven by compliance, regulations, whether it be HIPAA, SOX, or whatever, you put that together and you end up with basically a risk management framework or, certifi uh, the, or certification and accreditation uh, process. And when you put those together, you come up with what I call the ISCC rows. All the domains come together, it forms the uh, four domains within ISSE, and that of course is information system security engineering. So let's talk a little bit about uh, governance and risk management in general. Okay. Enterprise governance, big picture. Why do we do enterprise governance? A lot of reasons. Uh, first and foremost is if the top echelon of, of a company or a business doesn't believe something is important or doesn't actively ensure that what they believe is important is actually being done, the chances are it's not going to be done. It goes back to the old adage of we don't do what we expect, we do what we uh, inspect. Okay? So uh, governance provides strategic direction. It ensures that objectives are achieved. Uh, it verifies that the uh, resources are being expended appropriately. Uh, in many cases, uh, the, and the reason why governance uh, came to fruition in a lot of industries, whether it be the financial industry or healthcare, is it's, it was about conformance to regulations. People didn't want to go to jail, so what do we got to do to make sure that the CEO or the CEO stays out of jail? 